was just in complete disbelief. He just said when not he, he thought he thought his uh, taser malfunction. Did he notice he shot him until he saw the hole in his back or something like that? I, I didn't catch it all right there for you. I'm sorry, you're bad. That's what I hear more than anything. Are Listen. People who just cannot understand how you can mistake a heavier gun for a lighter weight bright yellow taser. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them? Unless you've been there, I, you know, for me, I, it's one of those things that I really didn't understand it. I need so, you guys, get yeah. you guys closer to the sound. Okay, and that was part of uh, KTV and Rita Williams' exclusive interview with Johannes Messerly. And as you mentioned, Rita Williams is inside the courtroom, but Michael, you explained earlier that this judge is very strict and does not allow any kind of communication, no technical communication with reporters. So uh, that's why we're relying on Claudie Wong, who's outside the courtroom for information at this point. And there's a reason that he's pretty strict well, about that. Well, there's a reason because he's tried cases before that he's had that experience. It's, uh, so keep in mind, remember O.J. Simpson? Remember Lancedo, Judge Lancedo? Remember with the TV cameras in there, that debacle? The L.A. judges are very sensitive to that. I personally, although, you know, I come on television, I have this illegal analyst. I yeah, he's legal analyst, people. How straight up the press is. And I've come to understand, you can trust the press. There's some you can't, but 99% you can't. Some judges just won't allow it. They go back to the dark ages. I don't think you can't trust the press. I'm paper, sorry. Pencil, paper, that's it. But we are in a communication era now where people have a right to know what's going on. So I've got... Something else in there, the computers, so they can communicate instantly and let the public know what's going on. It is a public forum. Forever, while it... See, it's in actual context. It's logically Everybody else is showing up. Uh, now, sometimes these you can people have a verdict of involuntary manslaughter with a gun enhancement. There are factual scenarios where that can occur. Like what? So, uh, well, for example, if I had a gun and I pulled it out and I started waving it around to threaten people, and my finger was in the trigger guard, and while waving it around, I accidentally pulled the trigger and killed somebody. That's involuntary manslaughter because I was negligent and I killed somebody. I used a gun because I was brandishing it around to intimidate people. That would be a circumstance where you would have both uh, the verdict on involuntary manslaughter and the gun enhancement. It would not be problematic. I don't know if you can hear that. In this case, the defense was not that he had a gun and he was using it, but that he simply did not believe that he had a gun. He thought he had a taser. That's what we call a mistake of fact defense. And if you buy the mistake of fact defense, mistake of fact, the way the jury should approach that is to analyze the the facts based upon what. I'm the glad you can't see the TV. Be true. So you start with the premise. Yes, he made a mistake of fact. He thought he had a taser in his hand. Starting from there. And all the surrounding agencies that are helping out here have said exactly the same kinds of things. Yet every time that there's been some kind of big event, there has been some problem going on here in Oakland. Uh, you've seen all the boarded up windows. That's because people know uh, that there could be issues here. So uh, everybody here is certainly crossing their fingers, hoping that nothing in the end happens except for a peaceful demonstration. Okay, thank you so much, John Sasaki. Back now live to Los Angeles. Our Claudine Wong is on the phone. Still outside the courtroom, and Claudine, I'm sure you're, you're, you're listening to hear reaction from inside the courtroom. What else are you seeing just outside right where you are? We're, we're trying to figure getting out what's close. going on right now because uh, one of Officer Rand's friends just came running out of the courtroom extremely upset. Uh, the deputy saw something has happened yet, but he he went running out. Something has obviously happened that upset him uh, a great deal. Jack Bryson is walking over here now, yes, um, uh, who is the father of... Of, uh, one of Austin Branch friends who's going through the security. Here it comes. Security. I'm hoping to get from him uh, why he's kind of so upset and why he made his way clear. Well, like I said, uh, apparently one of Oscar Grant's uh, session. Session. So no people rush out of the courtroom kind of, uh, uh, unhappy. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming they dropped the gun enhancement. He's just upset. Have they made any decisions on his motions or anything? No. Okay, so Jack Grayson, uh, the father of one of Nope, he's just upset. The guy was just upset and stormed out the courtroom. You know, sometimes when people put on some extra dramatics and fuck shit up. He wasn't able to get in earlier, but he just went into this portion of the scene. 
Went into I'm still thinking. Uh, Measurely will be uh, set free. Flying out of here, literally. His dad says nothing has happened as far as any events, but uh, certainly the judge right now is going through why he's uh, they're going all, to make the decision he's going to make. They're in super hyper mode that. right now in Oakland. I mean, it's a fever pitch, I'm telling you. The judge is headed as far as his decision. No, but certainly when you talk about emotions um, and I don't know if you can hear her or not, but she's like, this is uncovering, ongoing coverage from several channels because I got the remote right here. We can flick back and forth. Judges will sometimes call the attorneys back into chambers and tell them what his thinking is before they come out into the courtroom. And that Check oftentimes is to prepare the family so you don't have these type of amount emotional outbursts or you somehow hope to quell that. Has there been any indication that the judge has communicated with the lawyers to it? Of course, I put it on the wrong channel that time. They cleared the courtroom. The attorneys have not come out of the courtroom, uh, and uh, no one has indicated that there was any special in-chambers session. Um, so at this point, it's unclear if that that has actually happened. When you talk mm. about Jack Bryson, he is a very outspoken person in this because of the father, well, two of the uh, people who are on the bus with the officer Graham that night. Like they said, the streets of Oakland are packed with police officers now. Earlier we heard the sirens playing on the other channel. They're boarding it up. It's shutting down Oakland. These officers who are walking, it's really interesting. I mean, they're they're sort of doing what we would call foot patrols. I mean, uh, just kind of on standby. There are a couple on the other side of this AC transit bus. But it's off the hook. Drive around downtown Oakland about 30 minutes ago, and you could see paired up officers, sometimes groups of officers. Uh, Officers in packs, Jack. In this area. In fact, I'm going to ask Almost Andy every corner. There are a number of officers behind us that you can see on the other side of this BART station. Really just on standby watching. Now, combines the payment without letting... Going in on a day like this. There's another yeah, local channel. Like Let me this. try that one. See what they got. Uh, decided, I think, I just came up with me. I was able to get out quickly and keep my commitment to make my payments. And it's all behind me now. Thanks to Aladdin. Aladdin bail bonds. You notice every other commercial on TV is for some bail bonds place. How much longer he plans to speak, but I think at this point everyone's feeling like we are getting off too close uh, to hearing what he finally decided. Well, this says coming close, everybody. Stand by and uh, jump in as soon as you hear anything, but I want to uh, go now to our legal analyst, Royal Oaks, who is down in Los Angeles. I got to get another video ready. And I'm just curious if you could tell us what's going on out there right now. Royal. We're going to watch this together, folks. What you're seeing is a couple of dozen protesters, uh, uh, about 10 or 15 signs you can see there, and, and the chant has these been justice for Oscar Grant. These people are in front of the um, courthouse. This is a venerable building in Los Angeles, the criminal so. courts building where the O.J. Simpson criminal case was held, where the Bill Spector trials were held, uh, a lot of history here. And there's sort of a courtyard on the north side of the building that you can see, and that's where people are allowed to gather and express their opinion. You've got a huge police presence. You had about six or seven police officers on bicycles right up a half hour ago. You had sirens screaming around this building and uh, just trying to make sure that everything stays under control. There was a scuffle earlier. Uh, this is a very common situation in the sense that whenever there's a high-profile trial, it's a magnet for people who are very interested. For example, a few months ago, we had on the same day uh, a Michael Jackson hearing involving Conrad Murray, the doctor accused in his death, as well as an Oscar Grant hearing and you had dueling protesters people chanting justice for michael people chanting justice for oscar grant so this is a place for people to really express themselves and of course it's fascinating that this is not really a los angeles story this is an oakland story it's a bay area okay. story and yet well, it's a transplanted the, story they still haven't even said nothing about in general the interest level is isn't all that bullshit. high in los angeles with respect to the uh, measurely trial so yeah i'm, I'm videotaping it live <laughs> Well, see, it's like I got my, my web cameras going, and I'm, you know, I'm talking to give my commentation at the same time, and this is, they about to go bad, man. Los Angeles media, I mean, our Los Angeles 
television now. I mean, our yeah, I mean, Los Angeles is you know, it's funny, it gets coverage going on bad. Days when we had opening statements, certainly the reporters were here. When yeah, because this shit is happening down in Los Angeles. The verdict they born in Oakland and everything up. You know, and, um, you know, people running out, a couple here. people ran out of the courtroom already. They kicked two people out the courtroom. Um, the judge don't know about the gun enhancement. He think about throwing it out. So, you know, they're about to let this guy get killed, you know, and that's it. And like I said, even, even if the guy get four years, you know, he only going to do less than three, you know, because they're going to give him time served, remember? You know, they throw the gun enhancement out, he only gets a certain fifty percent of his time. With the gun enhancement seventy five percent, so you know, it's going bad. So I'm sorry I'm gonna miss the warrior game with you tonight. Oh people people honking their horns and shit. Alright man, I'll see you soon. Late. Yeah, I was going to go to the NBA game tonight, but I don't want to be in Oakland tonight. Maybe I should go to Oakland tonight. Let's see what happens. You're absolutely right. When a judge does give that indication, that's what those attorneys should hone in on. So there was nothing said that you had heard. From, for example, Michael Raines about why the judge should any pearl of wisdom, anything that caught anybody's fancy there that goes, oh, that's a point I hadn't thought about. So there's been none of that that's been reported to any of us. No reports on that, but you can bet, Michael, that there was a lot of attention paid by both the DA and Michael Raines on this issue of the gun enhancement. Exactly what does it mean that the jury, on the one hand, rejected murder in the second degree and said yes to involuntary manslaughter, essentially a tragic accident. He certainly didn't intend to kill Oscar Dan. And yet, at the same time, they convict the officer of the gun enhancement, essentially saying, yeah, we think he intended to use a gun. And that, as you say, yeah, this is the opportunity for the lawyers to get in there. I, I, as you know, I'm sure you're an experienced advocate in front of the appellate court, and I've, I've had some, some time there as well. You stand up and you have your prepared outline, and you're wearing your best suit, and you want to give your little speech, but it's really not that important. What's important is the interruption. Yeah, folks, they're going to do this, man. They are going to weasel this out. And it's just going to give cops, you know, they're just going to be able to do whatever they want to do, like they do now. It's just getting bad. Um, it's ridiculously stupid, but we can't stop. Well, what's interesting, you might explain. Let's we can't stop. We got to think. Puts aside the gun enhancement and says, "I am not going to sentence on that. I'm only going to sentence on um, the manslaughter." 